I would like to introduce to you our speaker, Chris Dudek, the founder of the founder of Dudek Tennis, the co-director of tennis, and head pro at Westlake Athletic Club. Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, what's up, guys? All right, let's go. Let's get fired up here, huh? Um, I'm just so thankful you guys all made it out tonight. I'm really excited to share with you guys a few concepts that I'm calling the skill of thought. Uh, the reason why I'm excited is because I believe if we acquire these skills, it'll transform into a player that you didn't know you could do. But to obtain these skills, we're going to have to go through some mental training rather than physical training. That's where the skill of thought comes in. I've broken the skill of thought down into four topics. First, we're going to talk about the ego. What is the ego? What's its purpose? Why is it there? Why is it responsible for us playing such bad tennis? <laughs> but how can we work with the ego to actually play even better tennis? There's a way, I promise. <laughs> Next, we'll be talking about match play emotions. So yes, we know that when we're playing, there's going to be some emotions out there. But why do the emotions get so crazy? Why does one point feel bigger than one point? That's because when we're playing, our mind tends to drift to the past and to the future. So what I mean by the past is we rely on our past experiences to then set up expectations of what should be going on right then. That's a lot of pressure. Out of that, we start projecting into what's going to happen, what negative results might happen if I keep playing poorly. So you add those two things together, and you've got quite the heavy situation. Knowing yourself can be calming. Hopefully I can know myself right now. Um, knowing yourself and basically choosing a style of play. So when I'm saying choosing a style of play, you know that when you choose one, there's going to be strengths and weaknesses. When you know your weaknesses, and then you make those errors in those weaknesses, then you give yourself a little bit of a break. And then you also try to figure out how to use your strengths to better win the match. So when we're looking at these seasons, and we'll know when we we're looking at our entire game, we'll see that we're going through different seasons, and we'll be in different spots. And so what I mean is, a lot of times you're playing well, and you're thinking to yourself, wow, I'm really progressing right now. Everything's going really great. I'm becoming a better player. But what about the times when you're playing poorly, when you're lost out there? How can we see that as progress? There's a way, because they all lead one into each other. We want those failure times and those suffering times to go away, but we don't really. It's actually what we need to get to the ultimate joy. So I've been teaching for over 16 years now, and my original teachings started here, and as I would attack each issue and solve each issue, I found that there was a deeper issue attached to it. So in my original teachings, I would see someone, let's say, missing a forehand. And I would go, wow, that follow through is not good. So then I would correct their follow through. And I would be like, oh, a little bit more like this. And that kind of worked. But then I found that the reason why they couldn't do the follow through every single time is because of their racket preparation. So I started developing, I really think a racket preparation should be like this. Once they started doing that every time, then they were able to follow through better. And that was all good when I'm just feeding them balls. But then when they, once they get playing, I'm noticing they can't actually do the right swing because of their body control. The body control issue has to do with when people are playing, you know, they might be jumping, they'll lean when they shouldn't, they're falling over on their shots, or maybe they're just using the wrong stance for the wrong time. So I started teaching that, and that helped a lot. When people had good body control, balance, using their hips correctly, good posture, now the swing could stay the same path every time. Because as you can see, if my swing is like this, and then I leaned over, the swing would go like this, right? So we needed to attack that. And that's still a crux in my teaching. I still believe in it wholeheartedly, and that's where a lot of my lessons go to. That being said, it's all good if you have body control, but then what if you don't bring any athleticism to the table? Now that's not saying, oh, you have to be some supreme athlete, 
What I'm talking about is just the general rhythm of the way you move and you strike the ball. The reason why people struggle with this athleticism part is because of the frontal lobe part of our brain. The frontal lobe is the part that judges everything, that keeps us from making bad decisions. So we need it. It says, don't do this, don't do this, and this will work out, and it's kind of figuring out what's going to happen in the future. That does not help us in a tennis match. When that is turned on, all your free thinking, all your creativity, your athleticism, being able to move freely, that goes away. When that is turned on, the other is off, right? So how did I get people to get past that? One of the main things that I felt was to tell people that it is okay to try to win, but you have to be okay with losing. Before, I would be so hung up on you know, the losing that I would be so rippled with fear. Then I tried to not care if I win or lose. Well, that felt inauthentic and that didn't work. What works is trying to win, but being okay with losing. That's how you get through the athleticism part. So great, now I've got them moving with rhythm, they're setting up for their shots correctly, everything's balanced, and we're doing good for this moment, but then the next moment it's not, or this day and the next day it's not. And why, why? Because the energy that they're bringing to the court, right? And so if someone brings a lot of energy, positivity, or they're pumped up and they're fired up and they're moving around great, then cool, then we can be athletic, we can go down this path. But when people were bringing no energy to the court, none of that even mattered. So I would say, hey guys, fire up, get excited, have some energy, right? That seems easy. Be positive, don't think of those negative thoughts. Be positive, that's, that's one that I, I went with for a while there. Be positive, and I am about positive thinking, sure. You can look at situations and try to take the positives and not dwell on the negatives and things like that. But overall, this whole idea of be positive and block the negative. That never worked for me. It never made sense. How can, you know, I see one of my students out there, 5-2 in the second set, ready to close it out, and they blow the second set, and I see him in between going into the third and be like, hey, dude, be positive. Like, <laughs> you just blew a lead. Like, <laughs> how? That doesn't work, right? I'll be diving into that later and how we're going to get through that, but to me, that style does not work. All of these steps have now let, led me to our thought process. Our thought process being how we handle our emotions. So I started teaching the other way around. The reason why I'm doing that is because, yes, every step is important. I'm not saying they're not, but none of that stuff matters if you don't start here. What's going on in your brain? What's going on in your heart? You have to start there and then build your way up, right? Now, of course, if I'm teaching maybe a beginner, I will give them some structural things first. I mean, you have to have some base, but pretty much for everybody in this room that I see, you guys have been playing tennis for a while, so you have that basic stuff. Could it improve? Sure, but we need to start there. There being a combination of our self and ego.